Hello YouTubers, my name is Eggy and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you the shading techniques I use with an airbrush. Before I begin, please understand that I am not a professional artist. I never went to an art school, so if you ask me about color wheels or theories, I would not be able to answer you. However, I do have about 10 years of experience with painting model kits. Also, the techniques I am about to show you is not the only way to paint. You see, everyone is different. So my way of painting may not work for you. So my advice is take what I am about to show you as another set of tools in your toolbox. Try and experiment and find the best way that will work for you. So shading, what is it? It is a difference in color based on the light. Here is a circle of a simple color. So if the light shines from here, this part will be lighter due to the light. Also, since the light is not shining here, this part will be darker. And this is a simple shading. It does get more complicated based on the shape of the object, location, and the number of light sources, and the opacity of the object. But let's try to keep it simple here. So what do I shade? Here is a simple circle again. And here is a circle with a simple shading. See the difference? See the difference? The rudimentary shading changes the simple shape into one with more volume, giving it more three-dimensional look. But why does model kit need a three-dimensional look? The model kit is not a picture, but a scaled-down version of a model in three dimensions. Can I just shine some light on it and catch some shadow and call it a day? That is because a scale model is a scaled down version of an item. As it scales down, some details are lost and shading will bring it back. It will also make the kit look larger than it is. In some cases, exaggerating it. Also, the paint of kit is an art. It is your piece of artwork and your own expression of the kit. Personally, I like to exaggerate on shading. So even the boring one solid color piece will pop out when viewed. When I paint, I tend to paint from dark color to light color until I get the basic colors right. It is a technique I became comfortable with when I was dabbling with digital painting a long time ago. Because of this, this became my main way of painting things. Let me show you. For this demonstration, I'll be using Mr. Color Lacquer Paint. So I'll be painting this piece in white. The plan is to apply primer, then apply dark gray as a base color, then apply white as a highlight. This is my usual way of painting. I am also extremely lazy, so I'll be using dark gray primer here, so I can skip a step. The primer applies in a solid even coat, so it, since it is not very opaque, you only need a couple of coats to get a solid color. Once the primer has been dried, I'll be applying the white. I am applying the white carefully on the spot where the white will be, and not applying the white on where the shade will be. Because of how the airbrush applies its color, light opaque layers are applied between the gray and white, creating a nice gradient change between the gray and white careful application of this can cause this beautiful shading. And here is a full pen piece. Next I'll show you pre-shading, probably one of the most used shading techniques. For this piece I'll be painting this yellow. The plan is to apply primer, then apply shade color, and apply primer and color. I begin by applying the white primer. I choose white because the main color, the yellow, is a light color. The yellow is also very tricky to paint because of its opaque color. So the base color will affect how the yellow shade will come out. Primer is also important because it will cover the piece in one solid color. If the coverage is not good, the yellow is painting over the different shade of color. The end result is a yellow of different shade, hue, and contrast. Once the primer has been dried, I'll be painting shade color. I can use black or dark gray for this, but for yellow, I chose the orange. Have you ever seen a sunset or sunrise where the yellow sun shines creating a beautiful shade of orange and red? It's the same thing here. This accent color will create beautiful shading. So on white, I paint the shade part orange, pre-shading all the parts. Next, on the pre-shaded parts, I spray the yellow over it. Because yellow is a very opaque color, I just spray over the whole kit with an even layer, gradually building the color. And here is the finished piece.
The next technique is something that I've been experimenting with lately. It is similar to the previous technique but slightly different. Basically, I am creating a shading layer and painting the color over it. The technique works with colors that are opaque, like yellow. Remember I mentioned that base color is important because it will affect the color? Basically, I am using that property of the light opaque color, like yellow, to shade it. I first begin by creating a grayscale shade layer. I use black and white primer to create this grayscale. Once the grayscale is done, I spread yellow over it in an even layer. Once done, the yellow will dry with different shade based on the grayscale layer underneath. And here is the finished piece. So those are three of the many shading techniques I use with an airbrush. Yes, there are other techniques out there and these are what I use the most. So try them. Take them and experiment, find your own way, make your own techniques, and even your own style. As I said, building and painting model kit is an art. Whether it be a simple straight build to a full custom build, the model kit you build is your piece of artwork and your expression. So go on and find a better or different way to express your view of the model kit making your art piece. I do hope that these techniques I show you will help you find your own style and your own technique. And don't forget, comply is freedom. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe.